One problem that can cause markets to fail is asymmetric or incomplete information. Today, we will examine how asymmetric information affects markets and how markets can function better by correcting information asymmetries. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what adverse selection and moral hazard are and provide examples of real-world markets that are affected by incomplete information. You should be able to set up and solve models of decision-making in the presence of incomplete information and predict the effects of policies to address incomplete information on market outcomes. There are two types of information asymmetries that can result in inefficient market outcomes. The first is when one side of the market cannot, cannot observe the quality of the good being bought or sold in the market. This is called the hidden information problem. The second is when one side of the market cannot observe the actions of the participants on the other side of the market. This is called the hidden action problem. The classic example of the hidden information problem is the market for lemons. Usually, this market is used to describe the market for used cars. A lemon is a bad used car. Suppose that there are two types of cars available in the market, good cars and bad cars. Consumers are willing to pay a high price PH for a good car and a low price PL for a bad car. Sellers of good cars have a high reservation price RH and sellers of bad cars have a lower reservation price RL. If consumers can distinguish good cars from bad cars, then the market will result in an efficient outcome. The problem occurs if consumers cannot distinguish a good car from a bad car. If we suppose that initially half the cars on the market are good cars and half are lemons, then consumers will be willing to pay the average price or one half pH plus one half PL for a car. However, if this price is less than good car sellers reservation price, then none of the sellers of good cars will be willing to sell their car and all of the available cars will be lemons. This is the lemons problem. Because there is no information available to consumers about which cars are good, the market consists of only low-quality products. Another term for the hidden information problem is adverse selection. If the hidden information problem results in adverse selection, then the only products available on the market are of low quality. Other examples of adverse selection problems include insurance markets in which only people who engage in risky behavior buy insurance, and labor markets in which the only workers available for hire are the ones that lack the skills for the available jobs. In the extreme cases of adverse selection, the market will cease to function altogether. For example, if insurers don't want to sell insurance to high-risk customers, or if the high-risk customers are unwilling to pay the high premiums that insurance companies will charge these customers, then no insurance policies will be sold and the market will cease to exist. Similarly, if firms don't want to hire workers who lack the requisite job skills for the position, or if the low-skilled workers are unwilling to accept the low wage that the firm offers them because the firm has to undertake costs of training them, then no workers will be hired. The adverse selection problem is why, in most U.S. states, drivers are required to buy automobile insurance. If they do not have insurance, they cannot obtain license plates for their cars. It is also why mandatory purchase of health insurance has been proposed as a solution to the adverse selection problem in health insurance markets. The second solution to the adverse selection problem is to create a way to signal that a product is of high quality. 
Let's suppose, for example, that the owner of a high-quality car could purchase a warranty to signal that the car is of high quality. As long as the cost of the warranty is such that only owners of high-quality cars will choose to purchase the warranty, the use of a signal will be effective at solving the hidden information problem. This type of equilibrium, where owners of high-quality cars purchase the signal, but owners of low-quality cars do not, is called a separating equilibrium. Note that the signal does not make the car a high-quality car. It is simply an indicator of the car's quality, which was present before the owner made the purchase. Thus, the signal provides what is known as a sheepskin effect. Signaling does not always solve the hidden information problem. If the cost of the signal is such that the owners of both high-quality and low-quality products buy the warranty, then buyers will sp still be unable to distinguish quality, and the hidden information problem will remain unsolved. In such a case, we say that there is a pooling equilibrium. The second type of information problem that we encounter in markets is the hidden action problem. This problem is illustrated by the principal agent problem. In this market, there are two participants, the principal, who for the purposes of this example we will think of as the owners of a company, who are usually stockholders, and the agents, who are the people who work for the stockholders. The principal's goal is to incentivize the agent to invest effort into the company in order to maximize the principal's profits. The problem is that the principal cannot observe the agent's effort, only the results of the effort, which, due to the vicissitudes of the market, are sometimes high even if the agent only invests low effort. The principal agent problem is an example of the problem of moral hazard. Moral hazard results when, as a result of the fact that the principal cannot observe the agent's behavior, the agent engages in behavior that is damaging to the principal. Examples of moral hazard include insured drivers engaging in more risky driving practices and as illustrated during the recent financial crisis, employees of financial companies making investment decisions that are extremely damaging to the stockholders of the firm. One solution to the moral hazard problem is for the principal to design a reward system for the agent that incentivizes the agent to do what the principal wants the agent to do. If the principal is successful at designing a system that aligns the agent's incentives with the principal's desires, we say that the reward system is incentive compatible. Sometimes designing an incentive compatible reward system is easier said than done. In cases in which it is not possible to design an incentive compatible system, another option is monitoring. One example of a monitoring scheme that can counter moral hazard is the mutual monitoring systems that are used by most microfinance organizations. This concludes this lesson on asymmetric information.